Hi friends, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm so glad you're having a good day. I'm having a good day too. I'm so happy we are both having a good day. Well, I wanted to share with you what I have in this jar. I don't know, have you guys ever seen something like this before? That's right, these are buttons. I have started my collection of buttons. You know, when I was a little girl, my grandma used to have this huge jar of buttons in her sewing room, and I used to love going in there, and um, I would dump out the buttons, and I would sort them, and I would put them in groups by color, or size, or shape, or uh, like maybe they were the fancy buttons. So I'd pull the fancy buttons together. I had so much fun, and gosh, so when I grew up, I was like, oh, I want to have my own button jar. So I have my own button jar starting up here. And I have some pretty fun ones in here. I have some green buttons and look, I have some flower buttons. This one's, this one is actually made out of felt. It feels kind of felty. That one's kind of cool. Um, let's see, what else do I have in here? Let's just dump them out and see what we've got going on in here. I have big buttons like this blue one and I have tiny buttons like this little little tiny pink one that one's kind of hard to see because it's so small huh um and then I have what else do I have in here oh I have some purple buttons and I have some blue buttons I just have so many buttons inside of my button jar well, I wanted to read a story with you guys today about a button. Well, it's about a bear and a button. I wonder if you've ever heard this story before. It's one of my absolute favorite stories about a bear who lost a button. Do you happen to know the name of this story? Hmm, I'm gonna give you a minute to see if you can figure out the name of this story. Do you think that it is, what? Do you think it's, it's Corduroy? Why, it is Corduroy. It is the story of the bear named Corduroy who lost his button. You are so smart. Golly, you're smart. Well, before I read the story about Corduroy, I wanted to tell you that we're going to do a little project after I read the story. So, here is what you're going to need for after the story. You're going to need... A piece of paper. It can be any color. Mine just happens to be white. You're going to need a piece of paper. You're going to need some crayons or markers. I picked my markers. Here we go. You need some markers. And you're going to need a grown-up who can help you do some cutting with some scissors, okay? So I'm going to give you a minute. So go ahead and push pause and go find those supplies and then come back and we'll read the story of Corduroy and we'll do our fun activity after, okay? Don't forget, you have to have an adult for the scissors, okay? All right, hit pause and go. I'll wait. All right, now that we have all of our supplies for our fun project or activity we're gonna do after our story, how about we sit back and read the story of Corduroy written by Don Freeman. This is the story of Corduroy. Here we go. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but no one ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. Then one morning, a little girl stopped and looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. Oh, Mommy, she said. Look, there's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much already. Besides, he doesn't look new. 
he's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Hmm, he lost his button. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I'll go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and began searching everywhere on the floor for his lost button. I wonder where he's going. Do you think he'll find it? Where do you think he will find his button? Oh, maybe. He, he might. That's a good place for him to look. I wonder if he will look there. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. Could this be a mountain, he wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. That silly corduroy. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there, before his eyes, was a most amazing sight. Tables and chairs and lamps and sofas and rows and rows of beds. This must be a palace, Cordray gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around, admiring the furniture. This must be a bed, he said. I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. <gasps> Why, here's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up. But, like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and pulled. Help Cordray yank and pull on the button. Yank and pull with both paws until pop! Off came the button and off the mattress Cordray toppled. Oh dear, oh dear. Bang into a tall floor lamp. Over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was going his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now who in the world did that? He exclaimed. Somebody must be hiding up here. He flashed his light under and over sofas and beds until he came to the biggest bed of all. And there he saw two fuzzy brown ears sticking up from under the cover. Hello, he said. How did you get upstairs? The watchman tucked Corduroy under his arm and carried him down the escalator and set him on the shelf in the toy department with the other animals and dolls. Corduroy was just waking up when the first customers came into the store in the morning. And there, looking at him with a wide, warm smile, was the same girl he'd seen only the day before. I'm Lisa, she said, and you're going to be my very own bear. Last night I counted what I've saved in my piggy bank and my mother said I could bring you home. Shall I put him in a box for you? The sales lady asked. Oh, no thank you, Lisa answered, and she carried Corduroy home in her arms. She ran all the way up four flights of stairs into her family's apartment and straight to her own room. Corduroy blinked. There was a chair and a chest of drawers and alongside a girl-sized bed 
stood a little bed just the right size for him. The room was small, nothing like that enormous palace in the department store. This must be home, he said. I know I've always wanted a home. Lisa sat down with corduroy on her lap and began to sew a button on his overalls. I like you the way you are, she said, but you'll be more comfortable with your shoulder strap fastened. You must be a friend, said Corduroy. I've always wanted a friend. Me too, said Lisa, and gave him a big hug. The end. Did you like that story? That was a great story, wasn't it? Corduroy never found his button, but he found a friend who helped him fix his shoulder strap, didn't he? And now he has a friend forever. I just love the story of Corduroy. Well, are you ready to do our activity? It has to do with buttons, and it has to do with finding buttons, because that's what Corduroy did in our story, right? Okay, so the first step you're going to do is you're going to take your piece of paper, whatever color you chose, and you're going to fold it in half like this. Make sure it's nice and folded. And then you're going to fold it in half again, just like that. Make sure it's nice and folded. So now it kind of looks like a card. If you were to get a card or if you're going to read a book, it kind of looks like a book if you hold it this way. Now that you have that folded in half, guess what you're going to do now? That's right. You're going to fold it in half again. So now we took that big piece of paper that we had and we folded it up so it's kind of tiny like this. Now you're going to open it back up and you should be able to see some lines in it. Do you see where there's some lines right there? Okay, this is where you need a grown-up. So grab a parent or uh, an aunt or an uncle or um, grab a grown-up. You're going to need a grown-up. Okay, grown-up, you need to take the scissors and you're going to cut along the lines that we just made by folding the paper. Cut all the way up. So the first cut, you're going to have two pieces like this. And now you're going to cut each little piece out. We're making cards is what we're making. We're making little cards, almost like little flash cards or little... Uh, cards for playing a game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're making cards that we're going to use to maybe play a game with. Once all the little cards are cut out, thank you grown up for helping us cut out those cards. So now we have a whole bunch of little cards just like so, right? Okay, now you're going to take your markers or your crayons, whichever ones you've chosen to use. Pick one at a time. I'm going to start with this blue color because, because it's really cool. And I'm going to take two cards. I'm going to take two cards and I'm going to draw a shape on them. I'm going to start with a circle shape. I drew round buttons. See, the dots are for the little holes that we find in buttons. So I drew two round buttons. You draw two round buttons. Your turn. You draw two round buttons just like I did. Doesn't matter what color you use. Just make them the same. There has to be two round buttons just like Nice job. Let me see them. Hold them up so I can see them. Wow, those are amazing. You've been drawing buttons for a long time, haven't you? Yeah, that's, that shows that, they're, that that's been happening for a long time. Well done, friend. Well done. Okay, now we're going to take two more, and you're going to draw another shape button with another color. 
So I think I'm going to use purple, and I think I'm going to draw a triangle button. So this is what my triangle button is going to look like. Show my triangle buttons here. Remember, we have to draw two for each shape button that we make. You'll find out why when we go to play the game. So now I have two triangle buttons. You draw two triangle buttons on two cards. Well done. Let's see them. Hold them up when you have them done. Oh, those look really awesome. Oh, I like how you did those. Those are really fancy. Those are some fancy triangle buttons. Well done. Okay, put the triangle buttons to the side with your circle buttons. And get two more pieces of paper. Okay, we need another shape. Hmm, I think maybe heart buttons? Should we make heart buttons this time? That's a good idea. Let's do heart button. I'm gonna use red for my heart buttons. And you know, I'm gonna be honest with you, whenever I draw hearts, they're not always amazing. Hearts are one of the hardest shapes for me to draw. But you know what? I just keep trying and I do my best. And it's okay. It's okay if they don't look what I think they should look like. There's my hearts. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I have two heart buttons. Why don't you give it a try? Why don't you try to draw two heart buttons and let's see what you come up love to see what yours look like. Did you get them done? Okay, hold them up so I can see them. Hold them up. I want to see. Look at those. Those are amazing. You are such an amazing drawer. Wow, those are awesome. Those are fabulous. Well done, my friend. Well done. Okay, let's put those together and put those on our pile. We should have two more cards left if we cut our paper. If we cut a paper following those lines, right? We should have two more cards left. If you have more than two, that's okay. If you're out of cards, that's okay too. But let's do two more if we have two more, okay? Let's see. I think from my last ones, I'm going to do uh, rectangles. I'm going to do some rectangle buttons. And I'm going to use, I'm going to use this black marker to make my rectangle buttons. I, oh, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. I'm almost done with that. You probably drew those super fast, huh? All right, here's my rectangle buttons. You do them too. And you draw some rectangle buttons. And when you're done, hold them up so I can see them. Remember, we need two because there has to be a match. They have to match. All right, hold them up so I can see them. Those are awesome. Well done drawing, you guys. Well done. Okay, now we're going to play the game. If you have more cards left over, keep drawing as many buttons as you want. Just make sure there's two of each because otherwise we can't play the game. All right, so now I'm going to take my cards that I just made all my button shapes on, right? And I'm going to mix them, mix them, mix them. I'm going to mix them up, mix them up. And now what you're going to do is you're going to lay all your cards out onto the table upside down so you can't see the, so you can't see the button, all right? So they're going to be backwards, and you're going to lay them all onto your table that you are uh, working at or playing at. You're going to lay them all down nice and flat so you have like a grid. So it's going to kind of look like, let me see, hold on one second, let me grab, I'm going to grab a board so I can put the pictures on there, okay? All right, let me use this to kind of look like our, kind of pretend to be my table, okay? So I have all these, I'm gonna lay them all flat, like this, like it's on my table, okay? And now we're gonna play memory, okay? So you're gonna take turns with someone in your house, you're gonna turn over one card, and you're gonna say like, I found a rectangle button, right? Because Cordray was looking for his buttons, so we're gonna play a game that's all about matching up the same shape buttons, okay? So I found a rectangle button, and then you're going to turn over another one. 
Oh, I found a round button, but that's not a match. If it is not a match, you have to turn them back over and try again. Now listen up. No shenanigans, okay? No shenanigans. No, no peekaroos. No peeking. Mm -mm, that's not the one I want. Mm -mm, that's not the one I want. Mm -mm. No shenanigans. You got to play fair. You got to turn over a card. Say what you found. What shape you found. I found a rectangle button. Turn over another card. Say what you found. I found a triangle button. If it is not a match, that is okay. That means the game goes longer. Turn them back over and try again. But if you do find a match, I found a rectangle button. I found a rectangle button. They are the same shape. That's a match. And you get to hold on to those cards. Okay? And you take turns going back and forth, back and forth with whoever you're playing with until all of the matches have been found. And whoever found the most matches, that's the winner. All right? I cannot wait to hear how you play this game, the shapes of the buttons you made, and how much fun you have. I'm so excited you came to hear a story with me. Thank you for hanging out with me today and reading the story of Corduroy and making a button matching game with me. I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye.